and through his parliamentary obligation to bring an amendment to amend Health Act so that he can consider the dire need of the people whom we represent. Honorable Speaker, I'm very humbled to be standing here to second this proposed amendment by the Honorable Baraza as a woman leader, as a mother, and as a representative of the people of Gidunguri constituency. Honorable Speaker, it is sad because I have gone through all the letters and memorandum of understanding that has been submitted to the respective committee in favor of this proposed amendment. Honorable Speaker, I have read submissions from KEPSA. I have read submissions from Kenya Health Sector. Submissions from Coalition of for Blood for Africa. And in summary, all the submissions are in support of this proposed amendment. We can never do a better service for the people we represent in this house if we cannot be able to embrace this kind of proposal. A proposal that seeks to regularize through a policy the ways and styles in which our medical practitioners have been referring our patients. Remembering, Honorable Speaker, that all of us are victims and we can become patients and we have been patients in the past. Honorable Speaker, I come from Edgidongori which is a rural constituency. We have just had the opportunity to have one upcoming referral hospital. And we look forward to the completion of that hospital, which is supposed to be a referral hospital. And we'll be very happy to have a policy which is going to guide on referral system. Because we also want to make sure that the facility that is coming up in Gidunguri benefit the people of Gidunguri and the neighboring sub-counties of Gatundu North, Gatundu South, and Roiru and Limuru constituencies. So a policy to guide on this referral system would be very much welcome. Honorable Speaker, during COVID, when we were not able to move around, we had a crisis. A crisis that bestowed on patients who were previously referred to other countries like India, and COVID caught them in those foreign countries. I remember we were receiving a lot of distress calls, emails, and contacts for us to be able to rescue our own patients who were referred into those countries. They were locked during lockdown. They were not able to pay for their hotel bills. Their, hospital, uh, their hospitality bills and even medication bills. Some of those referrals, Mr. Speaker, that are done to those countries, I do believe and I have a conviction as a Kenyan that we have hospitals here in Kenya who have all the equipment and qualities of practitioners that can be able to attend to those cases. But we are quick to refer them to such facilities because of this new paradigm shift in medication called medical tourism. This medical tourism comes with token. And there are some people who are motivated by those tokenism. And therefore, the many referrals they make to certain hospitals outside the country, they are paid commissions. This is done as a way of earning revenue for those practitioners, exploiting our patients and our voters. It is therefore viable for us as lawmakers to support this kind of amendment so that we can protect our patients and our voters from such exploitations. Mr. Speaker, it is always good for us to come up with a policy guideline that is going to guide us on who can afford what in referral. Because sometimes we find patients being referred to facilities that they cannot afford. 
And as members of parliament, I'm sure you can attest to that, we are constantly in harambees, in fundraising ceremonies and functions, raising money to support such cases where people have to go to a certain facility for treatment, but they cannot afford. But because the chief doctor has referred, the patient has to attend. And therefore, we have become slaves. We have burdens to pay, and we cannot afford. So we need to have a system where, before a doctor or a practitioner refers a patient, due diligence on whether this patient can afford to pay for the services that are being referred to is very important. Sometimes we refer patients to facilities because we have interest in the referral, but we don't care whether the patient can afford. This is very important and we need to come up with a clear referral system. Mr. Speaker, where I come from, we have had patients who are referred to Kenyatta National Hospital from Gidunguri, but they cannot get or access a referral mobile device. I mean an ambulance that is well equipped. Sometimes we get calls as leaders that a patient has been referred to Kenyatta, but there is no oxygenated ambulance, or we don't have quality uh, facilities that are needed for that referral on an emergency. So I wonder, when the doctor is referring, do they ask whether we have a standby ambulance that can be able to sort the situation? Because we have even lost lives on the roads as we try to refer patients, yet we can save that life by making sure that we provide the, the, the required um, uh, uh, intervention before we refer them. Some patients have died at the launches of hospitals as they wait for the processing of the referral documents. Recently, Mr. Speaker, I had a case in Kiambu Hospital where a patient died at the launch at the waiting room as they waited for the nurses and the health, uh, uh, health uh, assistants and technicians to prepare document for referral. Now, we need a clear guideline. What is supposed to be done step by step? I mean for both onboard and inbound patients. Mr. Speaker, as I finalize on seconding this wonderful amendment, allow me to register my disappointment with the response that the Committee of Health received from communication from the PS in charge of health, Peter K. Toom, Principal Secretary Health. The communication says, the ministry in 2014 developed a Kenya health sector referral strategy. And they have also been the process of developing a policy guideline on medical tourism. This health sector sectoral referral strategy, Mr. Speaker, was started in 2014. And to date, they have not completed making a strategy. So are we going to wait for another 20 years for the strategy to be completed so that... Please add uh, Honorable Omichomba one minute. Most humbled, thank you. Are we going to wait for another? Because from 2014 to to date, 20, 2023, how many years has the ministry taken to make this strategy? And are we going to allow them to take further more years to finish a strategy so that the honorable member who is elected by the people to be allowed to make this amendment? So we cannot stop making an amendment to help the people of Kenya because we are waiting for the ministry to come up with a strategy. As I conclude, Mr. Speaker, I second the amendment by the Honorable Baraza, and I am proud that this son of Kimunili has done us proud by bringing this wonderful amendment to save our people. Thank you. Very well. Honorable members, I now propose the question that the health amendment number two bill